Do you want less inflammation? Then stay tuned for my top five anti-inflammatory foods. Hi everyone, Floyd Meyer here with Catalyst Impacts and today we are going to be talking about my top five anti-inflammatory foods. So let's jump right in. Number one at the top of the list is going to be berries and this is going to include blueberries, raspberries, cherries, especially dark cherries, strawberries, things like that. And these compounds have the chemicals in them that give them their anti-inflammatory properties are called polyphenols. And specifically, the, the ones, the chemicals that are in them that make up the reds, the blues, the purples, those really dark colors that we're so attracted to are a special class of those polyphenols called anthocyanins. And these anthocyanins are extremely strong antioxidants. And what that means is that they can scavenge, they can go throughout your body, go throughout your bloodstream and inside of your cells, and they can actually bind to free radicals that are, are going around. And these free radical compounds have an extra electron on the end, and that makes them really, really, uh, really, really energetic. And so what happens is when you have these free radicals that are going throughout your body, they bind to whatever it is that they run into. So if they run into part of your cell membrane, they're going to bind there and damage that. If they happen to be inside of your cells, inside your nucleus, they can bind to parts of your DNA and cause damage that way. And so we want these antioxidant compounds in our bodies so that they can bind to these free radicals and neutralize them. So that is one of the things that these polyphenols, these anthocyanins can actually do for us. And so what I do is I get a really big bag of berries. I get them from Costco. It's this big bag of organic berries. It's got blueberries, raspberries, strawberries. It's got dark cherries in there and even cranberries. And so what I do is after basically for dessert every night or most nights, I end up eating a small bowl of those. And so that is going to one, it's going to satisfy my sweet tooth. And two, it's going to give me a lot of these anti-inflammatory compounds to lower my overall levels of inflammation. Now, second on the list is going to be fatty fish. And this is going to include salmon and sardines and albacore tuna and other wild caught fish. And what's in these fatty fish or the, the seafood, what's in them that's really, really strong are these omega-3 fatty acids. And the main ones are going to be EPA and DHA. And if you've ever looked at a fish oil, you might have seen these compounds listed on there. And we actually have two types of omega, omega fatty acids. Well, really there's more, but there's two main types. So there's omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids. And we need both of these in order for our bodies to actually work properly. And this might go contrary to things that you've read on the internet or heard before. Lots of people talk about the dangers of omega-6 fatty acids, but we actually need both of them. The key is that we want them to be in a good ratio. And unfortunately, with our modern diets, if you eat the standard American diet, those, those, that ratio is going to be thrown completely out of proportion. So your omega-6 fatty acids are going to be really, really high, and your omega-3 fatty acids are going to be really, really low. So in order to combat that, it's really important to be eating fatty cuts of fish on a regular basis. So like I said, things like sardines, things like uh, salmon are going to be really important, as well as taking a high-potency fish oil, which has a lot of that EPA and DHA in there. And this is going to help you in a, in a bunch of different ways. One, it's going to help your cell membranes work more correctly. So these EPA and DHA can help actually be a part of your cell membrane and they can help that way. They also can act as an antioxidant, which is what I was describing earlier. So they can go around and scavenge these free radicals. So they can help in a bunch of different ways. So that is why they are on the list. And if you are concerned about, I know there's a lot of stuff online about contamination in fish 
and you know just the concern of the overall planet with overfishing and stuff there's a really awesome resource it's called seafood watch and i'm going to post the uh, link in the show notes but they make a really awesome guide that you can take to the supermarket when you're shopping next time and they give you what the the types of fish that they would recommend that you get exactly where they're from and the different types and then so they have a, a really good list an okay list and then fish that you definitely want to avoid for again reasons for contamination and then also just you know sustainable food practices so that can be super super helpful so make sure you guys check that out now number three on the list this one has become really popular lately and that is turmeric now turmeric is it's a, a red orange it's a it's a spice and it actually comes from it's a type of root uh, root vegetable and so you grind it up and they grind it up into a powder and it's traditionally used in uh, like curries and things like that and it's kind of got a little bit of a spice to it and so it's become really really popular because it's been shown that there's a certain chemical in turmeric which is called curcumin and curcumin is going to be a really really powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory compound so it again is one of those really strong antioxidants it can go around and pick up a lot of those different free radicals and it's also been shown to do numerous other things it actually has been shown to help with arthritis if you take uh, the curcumin specifically which is the compound that's in the turmeric it's been shown that if you take 1000 milligrams per day of this curcumin it can actually help with symptoms of arthritis so and this is you know actual like severe arthritis so it can really help with things like that and it can reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease even cancers things like that so what i do is i just add it into my food the only downside to turmeric is that it's actually not very bioavailable meaning that our bodies aren't very good at if you just put turmeric on your food our bodies aren't very good at absorbing that and actually using it correctly to where it's going to be circulating throughout your bloodstream and scavenging for those free radicals so a good trick is that you can add black pepper whenever you are cooking with it or if you're adding it to some type of food add black pepper to that there's a compound in black pepper called piperine and it actually can increase the bioavailability of the curcumin by up to 2000 percent so it can make it much more bioavailable so you again if you're cooking with it make sure you add pepper to what you're cooking or if you get a supplemental form like a pill make sure that it has that piperine compound in there which most of them do now because it makes it so much more bioavailable now number four on the list is going to be what's called cruciferous vegetables and everyone knows that green foods green vegetables are good for us but there is a specific type and that's these cruciferous vegetables so that's going to include broccoli and cauliflower kale brussels sprouts things like that and these compounds are extremely extremely strong anti-inflammatory foods and one of the reasons why is because they have a compound in them which is called sulforaphane and sulforaphane is going to activate this biochemical pathway called nrf2 and that pathway is one of the main uh, modulators the main control mechanisms to controlling your overall levels of inflammation in your body and so this can be a really really powerful way to lower your overall levels of inflammation is by eating these cruciferous vegetables and numerous studies have shown that those people who eat the highest amounts of these cruciferous vegetables so eat the people who eat the most kale and broccoli and brussels sprouts cabbage things like that have much much lower risks of many many diseases so heart disease cancer alzheimer's things like that these foods the more that you eat them the lower your risk of getting these different diseases is going to be and one trick though is that that sulforaphane that compound in there is actually deactivated by heat so if you eat you know steamed kale or cooked broccoli things like that it's actually going to it's going to make that compound that sulforaphane not bioavailable meaning again that your body is not going to actually be able to use it so a really good trick is if you get a uh, mustard powder which you can get it at you know any whole foods or any type of health food store i think they're actually selling them in most grocery stores at this point 
Um, they, that actually is going to be, it has a compound in it called myrosinase, and it's going to activate that sulforaphane and actually make it bioavailable. So all you have to do is take some of that mustard powder and just sprinkle it on whenever you're eating, you know, steamed kale or cooked broccoli, anything like that. Now, if you're eating it raw, then the sulforaphane is going to be active. Um, so you don't have to have any problems with that. And if you guys want more information on that, pretty much all of that stuff that I've learned about it is comes from Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who has a website called found my fitness. And I'm going to post a link to one of her videos in the show notes. And it is super, super helpful at talking about all of the different benefits that sulforaphane and these cruciferous vegetables have on our bodies. So make sure to check that one out. Now, last on the list, but definitely not least, is olive oil. Now, olive oil is a staple food in the Mediterranean diet, and most of you guys have heard about that diet by now. It is by far, it, it's one of the healthiest diets that you can follow, bar none. And olive oil is one of the big components of the people from these areas that follow this diet, they eat a lot of olive oil. They also eat a lot of greens and a lot of fatty fish. So obviously these things are very important. Now, olive oil is high in what's called monounsaturated fatty acids. And that is one of the reasons, those are anti-inflammatory, so that's one of the reasons why olive oil is so good for us. It also has different antioxidants that are in the olive oil, and so that, again, can scavenge for those free radicals, find those damaging compounds in your body, and neutralize them. And it's really important, you really want to get to have the most of those antioxidants, the highest levels of those antioxidants, you want to make sure that you're getting you know, extra virgin, cold-pressed olive oil. That's going to have the highest level of these compounds in it. And again, that's really easy to get at most stores these days. So there you have it. That is my top five list of anti-inflammatory foods. Now, is there anything that I missed? What would you add to the list of foods that can lower your overall levels of inflammation? Obviously, this isn't an exhaustive list, but this is what I personally add in my own diet pretty much every day. I don't eat fish every single day, but definitely every week I'm eating these different foods to try and reduce my overall levels of inflammation because having lower levels of inflammation is going to reduce my risk of getting pretty much every disease other than you know an acute infection from a virus or things like that. So again, what would you add to the list? Let me know in the comments below and make sure that you guys have subscribed to my channel. Click that button down below if you haven't already. So again, this is Floyd Meyer with Catalyst Impacts signing off.